Hi guys, I'm B, and today we're going to be taking a look at some transparent burnt sienna hues. Some of them are called burnt sienna. Um, yeah, uh, we'll go through them one by one. And this was a viewer requested video, so hopefully some people would find it useful as well. Um, today I'm going to be talking while painting. It might be longer than my usual videos since I'm just going to be going with the flow. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you'd let me know if it's okay like this or if you prefer the filming and then voice over. Okay, okay, let's begin. Um, I'm going to put this all to the side a bit and then we'll get started. Okay, so we're going to be going through each one. The first one is Van Gogh Burnt Sienna made with PR101, then Rembrandt Sienna PBR7, Rembrandt Transparent Red Oxide PR101, Turner Transparent Oxide PR101, Daniel Smith Transparent Oxide PR101, Windsor & Newton Burnt Sienna PR101, and Daniel Smith P. Uh, Quinn Burnt Orange PO48. Okay, here we go. And, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna dot this over there for now. What is it? Transparent oxide red. I think that's enough. It's a pretty strong color. We'll come back to that. Okay, so first off is Van Gogh's Burnt Sienna. Oh, oh, oh. Don't you like this? It fits the old Van Gogh palette. It's really nice, isn't it? I gotta say, I didn't even know this Van Gogh was PR 101. Like, I didn't, it, I, I wasn't into pigments back then. But when one of my viewers pointed it out, I was like, oh, hey, yeah, Van Gogh's Burnt Sienna is PR 101. That's actually not bad. Next up is Rembrandt's Burnt Sienna. The difference between these two is that the Van Gogh version is PR 101. Okay, right away I could see that Van Gogh's version feels much more like a quinacridone sort of, where it's like really glowy in its undertone and Rembrandt's isn't glowy, it feels much more earthy, probably because of the PBR7. Now we have the Rembrandt Transparent Oxide, Transparent Red Oxide. Did I put enough? I'm gonna put some more. For this color, it's really a, it doesn't feel like an earth color to me. It's just transparent. If you want a burnt sienna hue, but like if you want a burnt sienna color, but without the earthiness and with the orange glow, try Rembrandt's Transparent Oxide. Okay, next up we have Windsor & Newton Burnt Sienna PR101. Um, 
Actually, we'll go with Turner first. Since the one above was Rembrandt. Transparent red oxide as well. Turner, Turner. Okay, this one's my Turner. I'm noticing that a lot of the earth colors in all brands are rather thirsty so they need a lot of water to activate it's not that they it's not that they're hard to re-wet they just need a lot of water to re-wet that looks quite similar to the one above if i do that maybe this will work Yeah, if, if Turner is cheaper for you, or if Rembrandt's cheaper and you like this sort of hue, they're both pretty similar. Okay. Next up, Daniel Smith Transparent Red Oxide. This one, we're gonna be a little bit surprised. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, I expected a transparent red oxide like my Rembrandt, but Daniel Smith's is in another world again. Their granulation is so beautiful. And in mass tone, I don't know if you could see, but in mass tone, it, it doesn't... Uh, how should I explain this? With these two... Okay, I'll zoom out in a bit. But... Okay, so these two... We already said that looks very similar and almost identical. So I'm just going to compare with these two, alright? This one, you could see it's very orange. Even if in, even in mass tone, it's still more orange than this one. If you told me this was burnt sienna, I can tell it's not burnt sienna, but this is more burnt sienna out of the two here. And it has more of like a Venetian red, English red mass tone. And then when it washes down, it washes down to a transparent red oxide, like orangey. A dark cool red to a warm red. Okay. Windsor and Newton. Windsor and Newton, Brent Sienna. Okay, now this is also in the lineup today because many people like the glowiness. Many people liked the glowiness of this one, and in my previous Burnt Sienna comparison video, it was the only one that had any sort of a glow. Oh my goodness, you guys. Does, Burnt, does Windsor & Newton have a transparent red oxide in their range? Because what I'm seeing here is it, it looks very similar to Turner's Transparent Red Oxide. And they're both PR 101. Is that, is that what's happening? Does Windsor not, Windsor and Newton not have a Transparent Red Oxide? Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm gonna find out and then I'm gonna put something here to show you if they do or if they don't. My goodness, we discovered something new today. Okay, um, and next up is Daniel Smith P048. This one is used to make quinacridone gold hues in many brands. Um, and this one is in the lineup because said viewer wanted a transparent version of 
burnt sienna hues. Oh wait, am I? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, sorry. I'm getting the wrong page. You know, guys, can you relate? When you have like a palette like this, you need a color chart, right? And then you're like, which one is it? Which brown is it? And you're like, one, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> yeah, so I'm counting one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. I even dropped a droplet of water in there ahead of time. Okay. Oh, that's that's much. Maybe it's because it's Windsor, uh, Daniel Smith, but it's much more pigmented, brighter, beautiful. Okay, this isn't a formal video, so I'm just gonna do this. Okay, guys, I don't like that swatch. I'm sorry. Uh, let's do that again. Interesting. Okay, this was very informative. Um, the Daniel Smith's PO48 gives a really rich dark mass tone. I'm not sure if that's because Daniel Smith is just more pigmented in general because it didn't take a lot of uh, re-wetting or a lot of water to reactivate. Um, I, I did drop a droplet of water in all of them. Um, but yeah, it's, oh my goodness, it's really similar. So talking to said specific viewer, whose name I don't remember at this point right now. Uh, so um, I'm going to do this so you could see all of them together. I'm going to say this one looks the most like a normal burnt sienna. It's not dry yet, so I'll give you zoom-ins, close-ups afterwards. But this is the most brown looking or burnt sienna looking and transparent oxide, red oxide by Daniel Smith has the most granulation. I can understand um, Van Gogh's burnt sienna having granulation because they're trying to imitate Rembrandt's burnt sienna, right? And Rembrandt's burnt sienna is just, like I said, orange leaning. Um, you could go back and take a look at my burnt sienna comparison video if you want to see that compared to other brands. But yeah, uh, I'm mostly looking at Rembrandt's transparent red oxide compared to the other red oxides, which is just these three. And Daniel Smith's transparent red oxide is just not the same as these two. Whereas quinacridone burnt orange is much more similar. Yeah, guys, if you're using one of these two, the Rembrandt Transparent Red Oxide and Turner's, and you want a Daniel Smith version of it, go for the Quinn Burnt Orange, this PO48. Because if you go for the Transparent Red Oxide in the Daniel Smith range, it's much more different and it it's not opaque or, or semi-opaque. It, it is rather transparent, but it's just a different hue and it has much more of a granulation. Yeah, and now we know that Burnt Sienna, Windsor Newton's Burnt Sienna is almost so, so close to the Rembrandt and Turner's Transparent Red Oxides. This is amazing. Thank you for requesting things like this. See guys, this is why this is why I encourage viewer requests. We get to learn something new together every day.
Okay, well, let me know what you think. Okay, so I'm gonna wait for these to dry and then I'm gonna take some close-up shots and scan them for you so you could wait to watch that right after this, but I think we're done for the day. All right, thank you for watching everyone. Don't forget to drink lots of water and stay hydrated.